Okay, for our Tech 10 tonight, it's going to be Mark, W-A-B-I-T, and he's going to be giving a talk on Simple Digital Mode Interface. Mark? All right, thank you. Simple Digital Rig Interfaces. I'm going to take this piece by piece, um, how to kind of get started. There are some tricky pieces in here, primarily the software, but the uh, hardware portion um, you can take a piece at a time, and that simplifies things in general, and let's see what's happening here. Oh, you want to page down? Oh, okay. So you can start without any special cabling or anything at all. You can start with a computer that has an audio input on it, a microphone. I'll try not to, uh, my director is giving me direction here. Let's see. Um, and. I have a, a little traveler's radio that I started with, but you can have any receiver that will receive and decode SSB. You can set it next to your radio. You can download the FL Digi software. You can tell FL Digi what mode you want. You can go to the frequency for that mode on your radio. Um, you can lie to FL Digi because at this point you don't have any rig control or anything set up. So all you've got to do is set it up and tell it, I want you to decode PSK31. And strictly from the audio off of that speaker, you can turn it up, your speaker will, uh, will put it out, the microphone will accept it, and hopefully you will see a waterfall display. And you can see the signals in there, and you can click on them with FLDG or whatever software you want. All the software will work the same. You just need to make sure you tell it to use the mic as the input. You also need to make sure your mic isn't doing anything fancy. Uh, on, for example, Mac, it tries to filter background noise. Well, unfortunately, background noise is what digital modes sound like, so you need to go into your settings, and you need to tell it, stop filtering out the background noise, I want the background noise. And suddenly, your waterfall display that was looking like, you know, nothing before will light up, and you'll have, a, hopefully, a whole bunch of PSK signals going through it and uh, hopefully you'll be able to hear it at the time when the bands are pretty good. If you get on 20 meters, it's active all the time, so if 20 meters is coming in, it'll work great, and you can, um, and you can get that part worked out and learn how to work with the waterfall display, learn how to work with all the various bits and pieces of your software, and you've done this before you've invested a bunch of time in cables and interfaces and things like that, just something that you've already got on hand. Next step. You can actually get on the air without any cables or anything. If you're using a keyboard mode and you're about to transmit something manually by hitting enter for it to send that across the air, you can grab your microphone, you can hold it next to the speaker of your computer and then press the push to talk and press the enter. And it's crude, but you can make contacts this way. Uh, it's a start. You've got no cables again. You've not had to put any investment and time into anything other than, let's just see if this works. Let's just play with this. I've got a dull afternoon. And let's fill the house with lots of noise, drive everyone else out of the room, and, um, and see how long I can take it. Uh, so, you know, and then after a few hours, you feel like you've got your rhythm down, you put the earplugs in, and you keep working, and you think, wow, why would I ever bother with cables? Next step, get yourself a jumper cable that will go between your rig's speaker output or line output if it's got one and your sound card line in. You don't need to do anything to match those signals together. Those signals work together by themselves. So um, you don't have to worry about anything fancy. You just need something that plugs in. In my case, I've got a 1 8 inch plug on one end and I've got a 1 8 inch plug on the other end that has a quarter inch adapter stuck on it. So it goes in quarter inch phono for my, uh, for my old kid one. And now, you've gotten rid of half the noise. So, your audio out from, your, uh, from what you're listening to goes into, the, uh, into your uh, computer. You can adjust your levels appropriately. You'll find probably that it picks up more. And then you can still be working those keyboard modes by holding your mic next to your computer speaker. And now you're only making half the noise. Well, actually, a lot less. So the next step requires a simple resistor divider. And if you want to make your own, it's very easy. Just pick two resistors, one that's 10 times the value of the other. Your audio out will connect to the top of the, uh, the higher one. In, the, in my case, I used a 4700 ohm. And then you've got the ring and the mic return on the other side with, uh, in my case, 470 ohm. And um, you don't need to worry about anything fancy. This is consumer audio stuff. Um, 
people like to complicate things, and as someone who designs communication systems for a living, I can tell you, uh, you don't need to worry about impedances, you don't need to worry. People, I, I, I'm amazed by what I see on the internet with people complicating this. And it's a simple, unbalanced signal. Um, it's not a balanced signal. You don't need to match impedances. You don't need to worry about the fact that your mic input is a 10K impedance um, and that it's, you've got a, a low impedance output on the speaker. You don't need to worry about that. Uh, it doesn't matter. All that you need to do is match the levels. And basically that divider cuts your, your one volt peak to peak down to where your, your mic won't click. So here you are, you've got a nice quiet setup now. Um, you turn Vox on, on your rig, and you don't need to worry about whether you've got a serial port to hook up a push to talk control. You just let the rig take care of it. If you need a little bit of a, a delay in there for that, you can tell your software that you need that. And so, again, that's a software switch. You've got the cable set up. And the only downside to this setup like this is that if you want to go back to operating voice, you've got to unplug things and plug things back in. And that becomes a hassle. Unless you've got a dedicated rig. The next step is what I'm working on right now. I'm waiting for the connectors to show up because uh, 13 pin um, DIN pins, DIN plugs are not very common, but I just, uh, I've got some that are supposed to arrive in April. So it's a bit of a backup at the manufacturer, but I should be getting them soon. And this gives you a plug that you can plug in, and in the case of mine, um, it stays plugged in, and I've got a push to talk uh, control on the back of my rig that allows me to leave the microphone plugged in on the front, so when it hits the push to talk, it mutes the front mic. And that way, when I'm using the digital, I don't have to worry about if I've got something going on in, in the shack, um, it's still only listening to what's coming in across my line, my jumper. And um, anything out to about 30 years old is going to have this. So it makes it a lot more convenient. So the next step is you can go to uh, rig control. And this takes a separate interface. Um, serial interface is common, but a lot of a lot of computers these days don't have an old RS-232 style serial interface. Um, so there's different ways you can go. You can, you can make your, you can get a USB to serial adapter and then you can make a serial cable. And since I've got an old serial control cable for my old Kenwood, that's what I've done so far. <clears throat> you can also get fancy. I started to get fancy. I started sitting down thinking, okay, I've got AVR microcontrollers. I do USB uh, with that and then I can um, use the other side of it to do the, the switch on and off for the push to talk. And after a while I realized the amount of time I was putting in, I could go to Amazon and get, a, get the cable pre-made for 10 bucks and I couldn't even buy the parts for 10 bucks. So that's what I've got now. So you can pick up some noise from the environment. Um, the first quick fix is to take your cables and twist them. And that will cut out a lot of local RF noise. Make sure it's not got uh, a speaker sitting nearby and it's interacting with it magnetically. Um, make sure you've got good grounds. Make sure your connections are good. The obvious stuff. It's, it's nothing very complicated. Um, again, you'll see a lot of very uh, complex treatments of the whole interconnect issue and scary warnings of things that might happen if you don't do it exactly right. Have this complex thing to act as an interface or buy one of the expensive interfaces. Um, you can put together the interface in an afternoon with a few bucks worth of parts. Um, and the highest price is going to be your plugs. Okay, um, any questions you've got? Um, this slide set is available on wabit.com. And um, you can uh, go out and see what uh, W6LG up in uh, Wolf Mountain did. Um, he made himself an FT8 light bulb dipole. So he's got two light bulbs. It's not an actual dipole, it's just a, a splitter socket, and he got himself well into Canada with that. So set in a window inside the house, and, uh, and he got, I think, two jumps out there working this with, uh, you know, how much was it emitting? Um, I'd be surprised if you could easily measure it. So. Uh, the digital modes are a lot of fun. You can do a lot with them. And, and Jim's video is a crack up. He also takes Christmas lights and uses them as a dipole. So you can see where your current voltage are. 
and, and see what's happening with your antenna. All right, any questions? What software do you recommend now? I use FL Digi because I can use it on all my computers. <coughs> I'm, I'm a, an OS hopper, so I go between Windows and Mac and Linux. And so FL Digi works on all of them. It looks the same on all of them, and I can set it up the same on all of them. So that's what I use. And then it's got a bunch of packages that go with it that will let it do different things. What was that again? What was it again? FL Digi. And if you search on that, you'll go to the, the site. Oh, and if you try to install it on a Mac, they tell you you're an evil person trying to install dangerous software. Um, so you have to go in and tell its security thing, you know, and it'll say this is an unknown developer. So it won't even give you the option by default to go ahead and run it on a Mac because they're, they're working so hard to be secure for you that they're not going to let you do stuff with your computer that they don't like. And uh, so you have to go into the security thing. Once you try to run it once, it'll come up with a thing in the security uh, settings that will let you uh, green list it. So, or whitelist it, let, let it go through. Um, what I did was I went out uh, into the terminal and I ran a command that basically turns that whole subsection of the, of the security software off because I'm a security professional and I don't want their nonsense in my face, so. How much does uh, FL uh, Digi cost? Zero, goose egg, it's free. And that's one of the reasons that I like it. You can try it out, you can play with it, you don't worry about whether you've got a 30 day you know, timer going on you. You don't have to worry about, uh, you know, if I don't use it much this year, you know, how much am I going to get into digital modes? Gee, I don't know. Oh, I bought this expensive software. I've got a one-year license. Hey, let's get on the air and my license expired. Um, you know, no sense dealing with that. FL Digi is free. It supports all the major modes. Um, they keep coming out with new versions that support new modes as they're developed, like FT8 is a recent one. And, um, and so you can keep up with where everybody's racing off now into what the exciting new mode is. And FT8's been burning up the airwaves. Uh, you can still find people to talk to on PSK. And there's uh, the JT modes also that are slower, but people are kind of, they, they all raced off to FT8, and people are kind of coming back now. So um, there's a lot to be done. A lot of different modes, each one's got its own things. The other thing, you don't need high power. Uh, I hit New Zealand with 20 watts for my Gulch. So, yeah. Australia five watts. Yeah. FTA. Yeah, yeah. And mine was under terrible conditions. The bands were dead. I was went out there on voice. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And uh, and yet when I when I went on to digital, you know, I just had it turned up a bit. With mine, it's hard to find where high, five watts is because I just got a tiny little power knob. But uh, still had it turned way down and no problem. Okay. Thank you.